Hey everyone, it's John and today what we're going to be doing is looking at what I consider to be my most valuable tool in my tool belt for network automation and surprisingly maybe for some it's Vim, so let's do it. So very often when I tell people that I use Vim as my main text editor, people tend to have this incredulous response of sheer disbelief. They can't imagine how someone can use something so old fashioned. Now I understand that many people prefer to use things like PyCharm and VS Code to do all of our editing, but I think, in my opinion at least, is that Vim has got some super efficient tools to use and I want to share some of them with you today. Okay, now before we start, what I want to do is show you my actual Vim settings. So if I go into my Vim RC file, okay, so the feature which I really, really rely upon is something called relative number. So what you want to do in your Vim file is type just what you see here, set relative number, that will give you access to the relative number functionality. I also have syntax enabled and just for my own sanity I've also disabled the audio bell, I've actually set a visual bell. That means that when I have some kind of error or I do a tab, I'm not going to be getting that constant beep noise which might just drive you insane. And if we do an ls we'll see we've got a bunch of files here. Okay now this is not going to be an exhaustive demonstration of everything that Vim can do. It's just really to highlight the things which I use more often for me. Okay, now the first thing which I want to point out is that Vim has been optimised for text editing, not for writing text, editing text. And because of this, Vim has different modes of operation. The most common mode you're going to find yourself in is normal mode. Now in normal mode, you're not actually going to be doing any of your typing, it's more about giving instructions about how you want to act upon the text file. So let's look at my cursor here, okay? Now if I push the letters GG, it's not actually going to type the letters GG on the screen. What it's going to do is take that as an instruction to move the cursor to the top of the file. So I do GG and up it pops to the top of the file. And I can also control this cursor by using the letter J to move the cursor down the way. And by pushing the letter K, it moves it back up. Okay, so this seems really quite trivial. So where exactly am I going with this? Well the thing is Vim uses verbs and nouns and motions and operators so I can actually leverage this functionality to make my editing a lot easier. So let me show you this. Okay so if you look at the numbers on the left hand side of the file those are the line numbers so let's use this to our advantage. So let's say I wanted to delete all of this text up here quite quickly i.e. take me down to the seventh line. All that I would need to do would be to press D for delete, 7 for the line and then J for down, so delete 7 lines down, so D7J takes it all down. Now here's the thing with Vim, everything is repeatable and undoable, so if I push the letter U it's going to undo that change, it's one whole atomic operation, and if I want to redo the change I push Control R. So that was the undoable feature, but if we want to see the repeatability, Vim remembers everything we last did as one whole operation, so the last operation we did was delete seven lines down. So if I just push the dot, it will simply repeat the last operation, which is delete seven lines down. So if I push dot, we go another seven lines down. And again, we push uu, -U, it undeletes everything yet again. Okay, so with Vim, if we want to delete an entire line, we just simply type dd. And because Vim remembers that operation, delete an entire line, if we just simply push the dot, it will repeat that operation. Delete, delete. And if we want to undo, just simply push U, U, U. So let's say I quickly wanted to delete this line here, the title, okay? That is on line number 14. So if I just simply type 14J, that says go down to line number 14, remember J is downward, and then I can just simply push DD, and that removes it. And again to undo, push U, and go back to the top of the file, GG. Okay, so let's say I wanted to make a copy of this line here. So if I push 9J, that takes me to position 9. And if I want to copy this line, in Vim we use something called a yank. Yank is effectively a copy. And if I want to copy this exact line, I just push YY. That's me copied it. And if I push P, it will then paste it. And again, because we have this atomic operation, copy this line, I can just push dot 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 and it will just keep pasting it. And again, to undo, just keep doing U. And you'll notice as I move my cursor, I'm always in effectively position zero. The line above me is line one and the line below me is line one. This is relative number. 
And because we have relative number enabled, it makes it really easy to eyeball a line if we want to carve out that piece of information. So let's say I wanted to delete up to where the NR is, line 5, I could just simply say D5 and then K for up. That removes us up to that point, and again to undo, push the U. Okay, now here's one I always, always use. Let's say I wanted to change, I don't know, maybe the argument within this function. If I push the letters C, I, W, it's going to change the inner word. So I do C, I, W, and you'll notice that down the left hand side something happened as well. We are now in insert mode, we're no longer in normal mode. Insert mode is the mode when we want to actually type in text, so if I typed in GG it wouldn't move me to the top of the line, it would actually start typing GG. So I've done change in our word and I now just change this to task and if I push escape to go back to normal mode from insert mode, Vim now remembers that as an atomic operation, change the inner word to task, so if I go into say for example here and just do a dot, it's going to repeat the operation. And I can effectively start that anywhere I want, I could go down here and do a dot here, it will change it there, I could change this to a dot, I could change this, it's going to change that inner word to the word task, that is the operation which we are repeating. Okay so let's say we wanted to change the configuration text file, we can do 9j to take us down to the ninth line, and what we want to do is make a change inside the quote, so if we do a change in our quote, we do ci quotes, and again it's dropped us into insert mode to begin typing, and I just said new config.txt, push escape to go back into normal mode, and if I just move down to the next set of quotes, and just push the dot, it's going to repeat the same operation, change within the quotes to new config.txt. Ok so let's look at another file then, let's say I wanted to make a copy of a function here ok, one of the options available to me would be to copy down to line 12, so a copy in Vim is yank, so we're doing y12j, that's me copied that, and if I simply push p for paste, we're going to get a second copy now, we've got two bgp confs, you see that? And again we push u, we undo it. The second way to achieve this would be to simply yank the inner paragraph, yep. And again we have that repeatability, just do a dot, it pastes it again, and a dot, so now we've got all these bgp confs, and just push u to undo it. And let's say for whatever reason we wanted to outdent this text, we would simply push the arrow, then 10 for the 10th line, and then j, and it's going to outdent down to the 10th line. And again press u to undo, and if we want to indent it, we push the arrow the other way, down to 10, and j for down, and it's going to indent again, and u again to undo. Now one of the things I absolutely love about Vim is that we have access to our bash shell, so we can do our greps, we can use our xargs, we can sort, all these things are available to us, so let me demonstrate that. So I don't know, let's imagine I've got a large block of code here with many functions and I just want to quickly see all of my functions. I could just simply drop into my bash shell by doing a colon and then a percent sign, that means work on this file, and if I put an exclamation mark that gives me access to my bash commands. And if I just simply grep for the word def, it's going to show me all of my functions. And I can say for example, see that I've got a function there called main, push u to go back to the main script. Then I can push a forward slash, and anything I type after the forward slash will now search, so I can just search for main, hit enter, and then say for example, change in our words, and call it, I don't know, new main, escape to go back to normal mode, push n to go to the next version, push a dot, which will repeat the operation and change the inner word, again, n again, and dot, change it. And of course, undo, takes us back to the start. Super, super fast way to do that. And because this is a lab environment, you'll notice that little throughout this script, I've got this verify equals false, this goes through all the functions. If I wanted to quickly remove that, again I could get my bash script with percentage sign, exclamation mark, and do an inverted grep, grep minus v, and then just type in the word false, and bam, it's going to strip away all the lines with that word false in it. And again we push u to undo it, and let's say that we didn't actually want to remove the word false, we just simply wanted to change it to the word true, we can do a simple substitution, so we do a colon, percent sign, work on this file, s for substitution, then do a forward slash, so search for this word, and we're going to search for false, forward slash, and then replace it with true, and then do a forward slash g to act globally on all instances. Now everything has been flipped to true. And as you can see I've got a whole bunch of devices within this host file, I think I've got about 50 or so. 
So anyway, let's say I wanted to quickly change the platform from iOS to iOS XE. It's simply a case of colon, percent sign, work in this file, substitute and search for iOS and change it to iOS XE and act globally. And very often I'll actually want to downsize my lab environment so rather than actually automating over 50 devices, maybe I just want to do some basic testing and automate over free. Now the temptation for some people is to simply go to the host they don't want and drag right over all of the devices and then eventually scroll down to the bottom of the file and then delete. And you can do something similar with Vim by using visual mode if you just push say V, takes us into visual mode and I just arrow down, it's going to highlight everything and then when I get to the bottom of the file I could just push X and it's going to delete all that, okay? But that's a lot of scrolling. So let's say I just quickly wanted to keep 10 devices. What I would do would be a forward slash and then search for R10, hit enter. Now I want to keep down to this part here, so I'll go down to line 5 and I'll do that by doing 5J. And then what I can do is just push delete and give the number of lines I want to delete. Now I actually can't see how many lines are below me, I would have to scroll right down. So maybe there's a hundred lines, I could do D, 100J, delete 100 down. But what I'm going to do is just guess a very very high number which I know will encompass all of the lines. So if I did D, 500J, that will certainly encompass all the lines. So if I had a host file of maybe a thousand devices, I wouldn't need to scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the file. I could just give Vim a rather large number to delete downward, which will extract everything below the point I'm at. And again, just push U to undo it all. And the last thing I want to highlight to you is relevant to things like netconf when you're working with XML. So if I go into my random XML file, we can see that we have all of these XML tags littered throughout the entire document. And effectively what I've got here is a ginger template, you can see that with these variable substitutions. But what if I wanted to quickly change the variables within the tags? I could quickly target that tag by doing 19j, go down to the 19th line, and then do change inner tag, CIT, and that drops me into insert mode. And I can just add a new tag in, so I can just say new underscore var, and then escape to go back into normal mode. And as per usual, I can just stamp that change throughout the document, go down here and push a dot, it's going to change that. And here's the thing, you don't actually need to be within the tags. If you look where my cursor is, all the way over in the right hand side here, if I push a dot, it's still going to understand to change within the tags. Okay, now here's the cool part. See if we go to the map tag, you can see that the map tag has actually got many tags nested within it, like multicast, NBMA, so on and so forth. So if I move my cursor 6k up to the map line, 6k, and I simply push a dot to repeat the last operation, look what's going to happen. It actually removes all the tags within because what I've said to do, what I've told Vim to do, is to change the inner tag, in this case map, with the variable host facts new var so it knows the entire operation is going to be switched in between that tag. And likewise, if we go up to the IP tag, 12k, and do a dot again, it's going to yet again remove all the tags within and change the inner tags IP to host fax new var. So that's the end of my little introduction to Vim. It's super, super powerful and I would definitely encourage you to use it. And this is by no means exhaustive. There is far more things you can do. In fact, the reality is I'm only kind of scratching the surface. So yeah, check it out. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised about just how productive you can be, just how efficient you can be when you learn all of these little shortcuts. So that's the end of the video. Thanks very much and I'll see you soon.